Welcome to my tutorial on setting up the Raspberry Pi for development with Node.js. I'll try to keep everything very brief. Though this video isn't very long, running all the commands I cover here will take much much longer. But the bright side is that you don't have to be present while your Raspberry Pi works. I'll spend a minute on how to get your SD card ready, then we'll connect to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. This comes in very handy because you might want to install your Raspberry Pi somewhere where it is not easily reachable. We'll also configure SSH in such a way that it doesn't have to ask for a password. After that I'll also show you how we can mount the Raspberry Pi as a drive in macOS 10. This is a really a nice thing to have because it makes development on it so much easier. And finally we'll install Node.js and I'll create a little example project. So let's start with the SD card. Go to raspberrypi.org and download and unzip Raspbian. That's the official Linux version for the Raspberry Pi. Then we'll use a tool called DD to write the image to the SD card. I have already inserted my SD card and downloaded the image. It sits right here on my desktop. Open the disk utility. Here we can see the SD card and its partitions. Now we have to erase the card, choose the Erase tab and select MS-DOS FAT and click Erase. It seems that we have to do this step so that the next step in the terminal works. But before we get to that, we have to select the newly created partition and click Unmount. Then we will click on the card reader itself and select Info. Here we can see its disk identifier. Let's remember that. Now open a terminal and type in sudo ddif equals. dd is the command that we are going to use and if stands for input file. Now drag the Raspbian image onto the terminal and drop it there. Then type of equals slash dev slash this 2 Off stands for output file, dev stands for devices and this 2 is my SD card reader. Be sure that you don't type in this too, like I'm doing, but the disk identifier your SD card reader has. Otherwise you could really do some damage to your computer and of course I'll take no responsibility for anything that you might do to your computer. So just be careful and then hit return. Now the dd command runs for quite some time. This could take half an hour. The terminal won't show you information on the progress, but it will tell you when it is finished. But while the computer is copying, you can actually use the time to download and install some software we'll use later for mounting the Raspberry Pi as a drive. Grab and install both OS 10 Fuse and SSHFS. Once the SD card is ready, insert it into your Raspberry Pi and connect a display, keyboard and Ethernet cable to it and plug it in. We're going to enable SSH and retrieve the Raspberry Pi's IP address. And this is basically all we need for accessing it via SSH from the Mac. Here you can see the blue welcome screen of my Raspberry Pi. Now I'll enable SSH. To look up the IP address, type in ifconfig. If stands for interface. Here you can see that mine is on 192.168.0.15. Actually this comes to no surprise to me because my router is set up in such a manner that it always assigns my Raspberry Pi that IP address. Having a fixed IP address for your Raspberry Pi is really a nice thing to have. However, how you do it exactly depends on your router. Back on my Mac I can now log in via SSH by typing SSH pi at IP address. Password is of course Raspberry. Now we get to the more interesting stuff. We'll configure SSH to not ask us for a password every time. Instead we want to use SSH keygen to generate a public-private key pair and share the public key of the Mac with the Raspberry Pi. We are going to use the SCP command that stands for secure copy. Input file is id underscore rsa.pub and we'll copy that to the .ssh directory and name it authorized underscore keys. Note that if you want to connect from more than one Mac to a Raspberry Pi, you'll need to append its key to this authorized keys file. That works of course a bit differently. I'm still logged in via SSH. This is great because I have to create the .ssh directory first. I type mkdir.ssh which stands for make directory. Then I type exit to exit the SSH session. This takes me back to my local command line. Here I type ssh-keygen and hit return a few times. 
Now I go into my local.ssh folder and take a look at it. Thus I enter cd.ssh. Then I type open dot to open the folder from the terminal in Finder. There you see the private and the public key. There is also a known hosts file into which an entry for a Raspberry Pi was added back then when we first connected via SSH to it. As already discussed, we'll use the SCP command. Input file is the id underscore rsa.pub and we'll transfer it to the .ssh directory of the Raspberry Pi and name it authorized keys. Of course, it still wants the password. There you have it. Now we can connect to the Raspberry Pi and it won't ask for the password. This is really awesome and you can already imagine how much time that will save us. Now let's go on to my next big trick for development on the Raspberry Pi and that is of course mounting it as a disk. For that I'll exit the SSH session, then type cd to navigate to my home directory and open dot to open it in Finder. There I create a directory called Raspberry Pi doesn't really matter how it is called and where it's located. The next command will only work if you really installed OS 10 Fuse and SSHFS as I told you before. To mount my Raspberry Pi into that folder I simply type SSHFS pi at IP address colon. The colon is very important. After that I could go on and specify a path like slash home slash pi. But having nothing after the colon does the same thing. Well, of course just in this case, because our user's home directory is located exactly at that path. Anyway, I'll get rid of the path since entering nothing also mounts the home directory. Then I enter Raspberry Pi, which is the folder's name. Hit return and there you have it. You can see in Finder that it really mounted the home directory of the Raspberry Pi into that folder. Of course, the .ssh directory we created before is also there. It's just invisible. Now let's install Node.js, because after all, that is what this tutorial is all about. It's about installing Node.js on a Raspberry Pi, and not just any version. No, no, we want the newest version, whatever that version is at the time you're watching this. Thus, we'll have to compose a little shell script, which will run on the Raspberry Pi. The crux is, in order to get the newest version, we'll have to compile it from source. We can't simply load it via apt-get. At least today, the version in the repository is old and it's also named incorrectly because it's named Node.js, but it really should be called just Node. Let's start with our script. First, we'll get it from the World Wide Web. The command we need is wget. Then I navigate to Node.js.org and click download. Then I copy the source code link and paste it there. The wget command will save that file to the current folder. As you can see, it's a tar.gz file. Thus, I type in the tar command. By the way, tar stands for tape archive, but there is no tape involved, I promise. Then I enter dash zxf. The z stands for gzip because we are handling a tar.gz file, not just a tar. By the way, a tar file by itself would be an uncompressed archive. The x stands for extract and the f stands for file. The file I specify is simply the file name, so I copy paste that. The tar command creates a folder with the same name without the tar.gz ending. We'll enter that via the change directory command. And what's left is a typical Linux software installation process. First, with dot slash configure, we'll create a make file. Then we say make and that compiles the code. And then sudo make install, which copies the just compiled files to their final destinations. Of course, this requires super user writes, thus the sudo at the beginning. Saving that script to the Raspberry Pi is now a piece of cake since we have mounted it as a disk. I simply select a folder and name the script install-node.sh because it's a shell script. Now we could just go on and run the script via the secure shell by typing ssh pi at ip address and running it from there. But instead of executing it right away, I want to install something first. The problem is that if we exit our SSH session, then the build process would stop. This would be of course very bad and we don't want that. To fix that, I enter a sudo apt-get install screen and that program basically solves that problem. I'll show you how it works. Now screen is installed. I started by typing screen and what we get is also terminal. 
Now I start our shell script by entering sudo sh install node.sh. Super user rights are necessary. Then node installs and this process will take forever. It should take about 2 hours or so. But you can close the terminal window anytime you want. Then if you want to open it again, simply establish again the SSH connection and type screen-r. If you want, you can also keep it closed. The install process will just work in the background. And it's finished. I didn't watch it at all, so I have no clue how long it really took. So node dash dash version gives us nodes version and npm triple dash version gives us npn's version. That's nodes incredible package manager. Now everything is set up and that's essentially the end of my tutorial. The only thing that is left is building a crappy web server, which is kind of mandatory for a how to install node tutorial. So let's go on with it. I open a blank text file and type var http equals require http and then http create server dot listen and port 80. And then we'll create a callback function, which is called each time a request comes in. Function request response response dot end hello comma raspberry pi. Then I save it as node server dot js. Switch to the terminal and type sudo node node server dot js. The sudo is really necessary since I decided to use the standard HTTP port, which is TCP port 80. As you may or may not know is that HTTP is built on TCP, the transmission control protocol, which offers ports. And as it so happens, ports with a number lower than 1024 are privileged ports for which you'll need special rights. Okay, now in my browser I can type in the IP address and see the greeting. The program has really a nice structure. On the one hand, it's really compact. It's much less code than a similar program on an Arduino written in C++ might look like. There is no run loop involved. But on the other hand, it's more code than a PHP program which only prints out one line would look like. But a real advantage is that only one Node.js instance has to run and this instance handles all the requests and since Google's V8 JavaScript engine is at the back, the code gets more and more optimized with each handled request, while PHP would interpret everything again and again. If you're new to Node.js, you might want to also check out a web framework like Express.js, which is built on top of Node. Using a framework gives your program more structure. And there you go. That's a very simple Node server running on the Raspberry Pi. I really hope you liked my explanations and that you were able to follow me. If you have any problems or suggestions, leave a comment below, but beware, I'm not too deep into Linux and terminal stuff. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial, press the thumbs up button. I'm Joseph, greetings from Germany and have fun with your Raspberry Pi and Node.js.